<laughs> well, hello there, my friends. Chris Marcus here with you for Arcade Economics. And in today's video, we have an update from Fortuna Silver, one of the companies that we cover here on the show. Fortunately, joining us from Fortuna are Jorge Ganoza, the CEO, and Paul Whedon, who has actually been out there exploring the Sunbird project. And joining us from the investor side to ask a couple of questions are Rafi Farber and Dave Kranzler, who you know well from the show. So, gentlemen, welcome on in here and uh, hope everyone's having a, a nice start to their day today. Jorge, I'll pull up the press release here and perhaps you could just walk folks through the news that you released the other day at your Seguela project. Yes, uh, thank you, Chris. You know, Seguela is, is a flagship property for us and, and uh, uh, we continue to harvest value for our, our shareholders here uh, through exploration. And bear in mind that we this is a mind that's uh, a project that's being built. We are currently over 50% complete with construction. So parallel to construction activities, to, to, for again, a project that uh, by mid next year will be in, in, in full production. It's our expectation. We continue exploring aggressively. And here, Paul will be able to give, talk to you more about that and, and give you details. We continue to harvest incredible value. One of the drivers for the uh, acquisition of, of uh, Rock School and business combination with Rock School was the incredible value uh, we saw uh, and, and potential in, in this property, right? And, and it's you know, we're meeting, it's meeting and exceeding our expectations for sure. Well, it's certainly nice when that goes that way. And Paul, you've been closer with some of the details. So perhaps you could share your insight on uh, what you've been finding. Yeah, thanks for that, Chris. I think it's important just to, for, to cover off here the history around, around Sunbird and the Greater Segala project. So this is a project that was acquired by Roxgold back in April 2019, and, and we had a very small, modest 400,000 ounce maiden inferred resource back then, whereas today we've got 1.1 million ounces in reserve um, at, a, at a life of mine grade of 2.8. Now, that's a tremendous amount of growth that we've put into that, uh, that project in two and a half years, coming up to three years now. Um, and to take it now, as, as Jorge said, you know, we've got the plant which is more than half built. What we've seen, though, in that in that in that journey from, from the exploration is, is the continual discovery and generation of new high-grade pits. Now, we started off with Antana, which was a great pit, and it's the foundational pit for us. But very quickly, as an exploration team, we moved then into NCN, which is a, a 4.5 gram open cut. Um, and then we've made the next discovery nine months later, which is cooler. That's a 6.5 gram open cut. And then more recently, we've had Sunbird, which is what the, you know, the most recent press result is. And that's going to come out at somewhere around about 3.2 was the maiden inferred resource. Um, yet the grades that we've published recently, the 18 grams over 11.9 metres, um, that's quite typical of the sort of grades we've been getting out of much of these high grade pits. So, you know, where are we three years down the process? I think we've still got a long way to go, to be honest. And, and as an exploration team, we are really only just scratching the surface. We've got more than 30 targets left to go and test. Well, I appreciate that and congratulations on what you've been finding. Have the drill highlights pulled up here and Dave, I'll let you take the first uh, question there. Any thoughts or questions you have for Paul or Jorge? Sure. So I think I heard you say the, I mean, the inferred grade is 3.1 or 3.2 at Sunbird. Mm, 3.2, Dave. So based on the drill results you've been getting since the inferred resource was released, do you expect that the grade, the average grade will go up over time as you drill it out more? Yeah, look, I think we'll probably see it holding around about that low three mark. Um, you know, obviously we like to get the high grades, but between those high grades and around the margins, you do get zones of lower grades. Mm. Um, but you know, 3.2, 3.3 is I think it's probably a realistic um, grade that we will see over time will maintain that possibly a little bit more i think the real important thing here though is that the first resource that we released the maiden resource release for sunbird is really just the first mark in the sand for us now these results are generally beyond the optimized pitch shell that we used for sunbird so 
um, I would fully expect that this will get a little bit bigger over the next the next go around of the resource modeling. So probably keeping the same grade, but I'd be expecting the ounces to get larger. Do you have a time frame for when you might have the, the next go around on the resource estimate? Yeah, look, we're drilling at the moment, Dave. We've had a couple of rigs on there for the last few months uh, and we'll continue to drill for the next two or three months. Um, once that wraps up um, around about Q4 this year, we'll start the modeling and the updating work. So probably early next year, we'll probably get ready to release the next uh, next update for Sunbird. And just one more quickly, um, sorry, Rafi. Uh, just because I, I think a lot of people in the audience are more used to looking at North American mm -hmm. open pit type projects, you know, specifically Carlin trend and Cortez trend. Can, can you put the grades and context that you're getting in, in uh, Seguela and, and I mean, even, you know, what Yaramoco is compared to what you get, what you get for open pit in Nevada. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Dave. I mean, on a like for like basis, you know, Carlin is typically the 0.8 to one gram, 1.1 gram range. So let's call it a gram to make it easy. Um, we, we're sitting in a reserve grade around about 2.8 at the moment. Um, let's round it up to three to make the maths easy. So we're basically three times the value of what you're going to get out of Carlin. Um, you know, moving the same amount of rock, you get three times the gold that comes out of it. In a West African context, the average is around about 1.4, 1.5 gram range. So we're double what everyone else in West Africa is getting. So th this really is one of those high grade open cuts that you know, there's very few of them in the world nowadays. And this would be one of the new ones that's coming out. You know, we're over a million ounces in reserve now, and that's in three years. Um, so I'd fully expect that to continue down that particular path. And, and uh, just to add to that, uh, the newly discovered Sunbird is still in inferred resources. There we mm. have a, a maiden resource of 350,000 ounces that has not made it to the reserve that mm. Paul is alluding to at this point, right? So we continue to add uh, into the inventory of uh, inferred and, 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 and moving it through to reserves, no? But we're working on that. Yeah. Well, certainly seems like a good time to be doing so. And Dave, did you have any other questions before I pass it over to Rafi? Pass it over to Rafi, please. All right. Well, thank you, Dave. Rafi, any thoughts there on uh, any of the news? All right. Um, my thought is uh, that, um, you know, moving to Africa, especially in this environment, makes a certain amount of sense, especially because we see such higher grades. But just for the simple reason that costs of mining are going up everywhere, and the the spread between um, you know the gold the gold to oil spread has been uh, you know oil's been coming more expensive and gold has basically been flat. So it's so the 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 cost for mining has gone up and up. So what you want to find is more efficient mining, which means higher grades. So you have to do less work to find the same amount of gold. Um, is is there anything that Fortuna is doing or that they can do? Uh, to sort of lock in the the cost per mine the, the cost per ounce uh, mining whether you hedge oil or diesel what are your biggest costs and um, and how do you how do you protect yourselves and lock in a, a profitability margin for yourselves yes that's a very good question particular topical issue for sure uh, you know uh, we monitor closely uh, five items right uh, on, on, on a monthly basis or by monthly basis uh, we monitor uh, fuel we monitor cyanide, we monitor uh, cement, explosives, and, and steel grinding media, right? So compared to December 2020, uh, infl uh, inflation, uh, the, the range of inflation that uh, we see on the items uh, I just described ranges from 25 up to 70%, uh, up to April, May. Right. So, uh, you know, in, in our case, for example, we have currently a diesel hedge in place that we took uh, uh, late last year, no, uh, mid last year, late last year, we, we took a, we put in place a, a diesel hedge strategy, uh, no. So, we bear in mind that about 30, 40% of our costs are in are, are not in US dollars, but local currencies. And, and with the strength of the dollar against those local currencies, we're seeing also 
uh, a bit of a, a benefit on, on, on the devaluation. Uh, that's not necessarily something that uh, North American operators uh, benefit from. Uh, and that helps offset some of the uh, inflation that we see. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean, hedging, uh, diesel, uh, you know, trying to get, uh, because of the broader uh, spread of our business today and wider footprint, trying to, we, we have a, a better leverage sometimes with our, our, our suppliers and, and negotiate broader, broader type agreements for, for some of those supplies. So we, we, we try to make use of those, right? Mm -hmm. is, is just a general question, is the cost structure in Africa, is it any different from Mexico or the United States? Uh, do you see any savings in Africa or less regulations? Um, what are the advantages there? I would say uh, that Africa still for, for many investors is misunderstood, no? particularly West Africa. Uh, over the last, uh, what, 15 years, over a decade, West Africa has established itself as one of the most prolific uh, gold regions in the world. And prolific, I mean growth in gold resources and, gold, and, and growth in gold production. There, if we group the gold production coming out of West Africa, which the gold producing regions make up a surface area, which is the size of the state of Texas. So an area that would be the size of the state of Texas in the US is the largest gold producing region in the world, ahead of the entire US, if you package it like that, or ahead of China, Russia, Australia, no? so. In a small area, we have an enormous amount of gold production coming out. So over the last years, what we have seen is the, the development of well-established industry clusters and, and knowledge base that makes construction quite efficient. We're building a 3,500 ton per day, 3,700 ton per day mill and, and, and mine and ciliary facilities for $173 million. Wow. You know, Fruta del Norte, for example, uh, Fruta del Norte in Ecuador, which is a great gold deposit. It's a similar size mill and, 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 and mining operation. Uh, the cost of that was $690 million. Uh, now, Ecuador is not a mining jurisdiction and, and, and no two projects are the same, right? So there are some differences, but the throughput rate is the same, 3,700 tons per day. And we're building it for 173 million. Uh, Yamana, Cerro Negro, in, or Cerro Moro, is it right? In, in Argentina, 1,200 tons per day, $260 million. 1,200 wow. tons per day, mine and mill for $260 million. We're building 3,700 tons per day for 173. So what, what I want to get to is that uh, building in West Africa is quite efficient because you have pools of knowledge, experienced contractors, experienced service providers. Uh, all the manufacturers are well represented in the area. So it's, it's quite efficient, really. Yeah, I didn't know that. And I'm glad I asked. <laughs> That was a good just, as a, just as a comment to follow on from Jorge's um, point there, the, the current phase of open cut mining in West Africa has actually been underway since the late 1980s. So, you know, you're looking to 35 years worth of continuous production in that part of the world now. So that, that talent pool is deep and it's broad and it's truly world class. You know, this is this goes against that perception that Africa is difficult. Africa is not as difficult as people believe it to be. It is a it's a well-experienced, long history of mining in that part of the world. And open-cut mining is something they've been doing for 35 years. You know, that it's, that's just, it's not that different to what Western Australia is like. Well, it seems like certainly a good time and place to be there. And perhaps before we wrap up, Jorge, maybe for anyone who missed the resolution with the San Jose permit issue, perhaps you could touch that any other highlights from any of the other projects that you'd like people to be aware of 
with respect to Mexico, you know, we are operating, uh, you know, with our permits in hand, the permits that we were able to gain back in December of last year. Uh, through that tortuous process with the Mexican government, we never lost one day of production or nor operations. So uh, all of that noise is behind us. And uh, the business is going well. We are all running four mines in two continents, in four countries, and developing a fifth one. And, and really, the team is doing an exceptional delivery, right? Uh, I couldn't be more proud than uh, uh, or, or 5,000 strong workforce that makes this happen every day, right? Well, I appreciate that, Jorge. It's obviously not the easiest business to be in, although fortunately I have a lot of experience and a good team there that is leading you through, it, especially having a, some margin, even with the lower silver price. So appreciate everyone joining me here today and hope this was a helpful update for people watching at home. Uh, one last time, Jorge, can you mention the website if people do have questions, would like to get more information from you or anyone on the staff? Yes, you know, we... we... You know, you can follow up uh, on our progress, the Seguela construction at uh, fortunasilver.com. Uh, you can ask uh, questions if, uh, you know, through info at fortuna.com. Uh, so, uh, you know, we're quite accessible. And, and I think the, the website does a really good job presenting all of our assets and, and, and our and our, and our business, really, right? So uh, please uh, visit the website. Well, I appreciate that. We'll be in the link in the description field below. So Jorge, Paul, congratulations. Dave and Rafi, thank you for joining me here today. And you can go find out more at fortunasilver.com. And we will see you again soon. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.